Good day, students. My name is Mr. Ajayi Akitunde Oluwato Singh, your physics teacher for today. The topic for today is elasticity of a solid material. Behavioral objective. At the end of this lesson, learners should be able to analyze the concept elasticity with emphasis on one important terminologies such as Hooke's law, tensile stress, tensile strain, and young modulus. Two, generate the mathematical expression of Hooke's law. Three, solve simple calculation on elasticity of a material. Let's look at the content. Elasticity is the ability of a material to regain its original shape or size after deformation or after the removal of stress force or after it has been compressed. We can even say elasticity is the ability of a body to resist a distorting influence and to return to its original size and shape when that influence or force is what is removed. Solid object will deform when adequate force are applied on them. If the material is elastic, the object return will return to its original shape and size when these force are removed, e.g. rubber and other polymers. Why plastic does not return to its original position? Examples of elasticity. 1. A compressed ball. 2. A stretch string. Yes, let's look also terms used in elasticity. Using the diagram below, we said oh, using the diagram below, elastic elastic limit. Elastic limit is the maximum load which a body can experience and still regain its original size shape once the load or force has been removed. So if you look at the diagram below, you see where E capital E is written. So that is where we regard as elastic limit. Yield point. Yield point is rich when a stretch wire does not return to its original what sh position or shape. And if you look at the diagram, you see where we have Y, and that is regarded as our yield point. Maximum load. When a load is added to a wire that it cannot stand any further increase. If you look at the diagram again, where you have B, that is where we regard as maximum load or sometimes it is called um, sometimes it is called breaking stress breaking stress then we have what we call breaking point c is the point at which the wire breaks away from the original having been stretched beyond the yield point where it cannot stand any further stretching so if you look at where we have c that is the breaking points okay let's move on Hooke's law what is Hooke's law? Robert Hooke investigate how investigate how springs and elastic material stretches. Hooke's law states that the force needed to compress or extend a spring is directly proportional to the distance you stretch it. Or in other words, the more you stretch something, the harder it becomes to keep stretching it. It is a linear relationship. So, Hooke's law states that the force applied to a spring is directly proportional to the extension produced, provided the proportionality limit of the spring is not existed. Hooke's law states also that the extension produced in a spring is directly proportional to the force applied to cause the extension. This can be mathematically expressed as F is equal to minus Ke, where F is the force applied to the spring, either in the form of strain or stress. E is the, is the displacement of the spring, which is the essential, with a negative value demonstrating that the displacement of the spring once it is stretched, and K is the spring constant, or sometimes we call it stiffness. That shows how stiff it is and also the amount of force that causes the unit 
the unit extension of an elastic material or the ratio of the force to extension of an elastic of an elastic so we now say that if we want to make k the subject of formula is still there we say that k is equal to force all over extension so we'll come back right after the break thank you welcome back okay we are trying to look at uh, the Oak's law which we say that the equation of Oak's law is f is equal to minus ke and we said that k is the stiffness or, or or spring constant and e is the extension then we now say that there is a negative sign on the right hand side of the equation because the resulting force always act in opposite direction of the displacement for example when a spring is stretched to the left it pulled back to the right the minus sign shows that this force is in the opposite direction of the force that stretchy that, that is stretching or compressing the spring Hooke's law is valid as long as the elastic material you are dealing with stay elastic. That is, it stay within the elastic limit. If you pull a spring too far, it loses its stretch ability. As long as a spring stays within the elastic limit, you can say that F is equal to minus KE. When a spring stays within its elastic limit and obeys the Hooke's law, the spring is called an hydrating, ideal spring. It's called an ideal spring. So let's look at another term which is called tensile strain. Tensile strain is the relative length of deformation exhibited by a specimen subjected to a tensile force. Oh, we said that tensile strain is the ratio of extension to its original length of the spring or rubber. Strain is a dimensionless number. Strain under a tensile stress is called tensile strain. So tensile strain is the ratio of extension to original length is called strain. It has no unit as it is a ratio of two lengths measures in meter. So that is why we say strain is equal to extension all over original length. And we say that tensile strain is equal to extension all over original length. So, and when we talk about extension, that is why we use data L for extension. Because extension is simply saying the final length minus the initial length. And we say that L is final length, L naught is original length. So strain has no unit because it is a ratio of length. Then tensile stress. The tensile stress, the stress applied to a material is the force per unit, unit area applied to the material. The maximum stress a material can stand before it breaks is called the breaking stress. Stress is a quantity that describes the magnitude of force that causes deformation. And that is why we say that stress is equal to force all over area. And tensile stress is, is equal to, tensile stress is equal to stress measured in newton meter newton meter newton meter raised to power minus two or we say Pascal and we as we have said also that we have another term called Young Modulus. Young Modulus is, the, is a measure of the ability of a material to withstand change, changes in length when under length wise tension or compression. It is named after the 17th century physics Thomas Young. The stiffer a material, the higher its young modulus. Young modulus describes tensile elasticity along a line when opposing force are applied. It is a ratio of tensile stress to tensile strain. And young modulus is usually given the symbol E, 
capital E or Y. So tensile young modulus is goes to tensile tensile stress divided by tensile strain. And we now say that E is equal to tensile strain is force all over area, and tensile strain is change in length, which is extension all over original length. So we say that E is young modulus in Pascal, F is the force in Newton, L is original length in meter, A is the area in square meter. Then delta L is in change change in length in me in meter. Okay, let's also look at energy stored in a spring. Energy stored in a spring. After the break, we'll come back. Welcome back. We want to look at energy stored in a spring. Now, so that what is done when a spring is extended or compressed? Elastic potential is stored in the spring, provided inelastic distortion have not happened. So the work done is equal to the elastic potential energy stored. So we now say that the po elastic potential energy stored can be calculated using the equation elastic potential energy, which is E, is equal to 1 all over 2 times spring constant, or you, or you call it stiffness, times square of the extension. So we say that E is equal to 1 all over 2 times K times e raised to power 2. This is when elastic potential energy is measured in joules. Spring constant K is measured in Newton per meter. Then extension referring to the increase in length is measured in meter. So let's look at the strength of a material. The amount of elasticity of a material is determined by two types of parameter. The first type of material parameter is called modulus which measure the amount of force per unit area needed to achieve a great amount of deformation. The SI unit of a modulus is Pascal. A higher modulus typically indicates that the material is harder to deform. The second type of material measures the elastic limit. The maximum stress that can arise in a material before the onset of permanent deformation. It is its SI unit is also the Pascal. When describing the relative elasticity of two materials, both the modulus and the elastic limit have to be considered. So rubber typically has a low modulus and tends to stretch a lot. That is, they have a high elastic limit. So, and so appear more elastic than metals with high modulus and low elastic limit what we are simply saying in that place is that when we have low modulus then we have high elasticity so in such situation we have the material to be a good elastic material but when we have uh, when we have the high modulus with a low elastic limit then the material is tends to be a plastic or metal now let's look at calculations involved one a spring of length 4 meter is extended by 0 0.02 meter when a load of 0 0.4 kilogram is suspended at its end what will be the length of the spring when the force applied is 15 newton a spring of length 4 meter is extended by 0 0.02 meter when a load of 0 0.4 kilogram is suspended is suspended at the end what will be the length of the spring when the force is applied length is 4 meter extension is 0 0.2 meter mass is 0 0.4 kilogram and force is 15 newton and we know that f is equal to ke making k the subject of formula k is equal to f all over e that's the extension and you know that force is equal to mg so k is equal to mg all over e so we can say that our k which is stiffness is 0 0.4 times 10 divided by 0 0.02 so our k is 200 newton meter so when we have gotten our stiffness we can say that f is equal to ke we make e the subject of formula so f all over k so E is equal to 
15 all over 200 so our extension is 0 0.75 so the new length will now become old length plus extension so new length which is equals to 4 plus is 0 0.75 so our new length is 4.075 another question if a force of 15 newton stretches a wire from 20 meter to 20.01 meter what is the amount of force required to stretch the same material from 20 to 20.5 meter a force of 15 newton stretches a wire from 20 meter to 20.01 meter what is the amount of force required to stretch the same material from 20 meter to 20.5 meter force is 15 newton initial length is 20 final length is 20.01 so extension for that first one will be 20.01 minus 20 which we have is 0 0.01 meter so we have to go and find the stiffness which is constant f is goes to ke so k is goes to f all over e so k is goes to 50 divided by 0 0.01 so our k is 5000 newton meter so to find the second initial length is 20 final length is 20.05 so extension will be 20.05 minus 20 is equal to 0.05 so f is equal to ke so f is equal to 5000 the constant we have got in first constant stiffness 5000 times 0.05 so our force is 250 newton thank you